What's up? And welcome to The Greatest Teacher of All Time, where I, Quincy Dawson, interview teachers of color to highlight their philosophies, strategies, and personalities. Today, I've got Tyler. What's up, Ms. Lloyd? Hey! <laughs> what's up? What's up? Um, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah. So you're a PE teacher at a charter school in New York. Yeah. Brooklyn. Yes, yes I am. Okay. To Brooklyn. I should have asked you this before, but what do the students call you? Is it like Coach Tyler or Miss Lloyd? Coach T and sometimes Miss Coach T. Like Miss Coach T. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right. Um, so Miss Coach T, right? Um, you're a PE teacher, or gym teacher. How did how did that happen? Quincy, Mr. Dawson, I don't know how I got here because a long time ago, this Tyler would have told you I will never become a teacher <laughs> just because of like school experience and the things that I've been through at school where I was just like, I don't want to have to deal with this, like deal with this, like deal with these other kids that have the same attitudes or the same things that I was going through. I'm like, oh no, this is a lot. But on top of that, my mom was a teacher, so I was always around school, in at work, in school, at home, at, school's around me all the time. But to make it simple, I am very much involved in sports. Um, I've always been involved in sports. My route originally was to do sports psychology, and after I graduated from Spelman, where I met Mr. Dawson, um, I realized that maybe that wasn't my path anymore due to just financial reasons. It's very expensive to go down that route. So I was like, all right, let's try another way. So I started coaching, doing coaching swimming, co coaching basketball, coaching track, coaching a bunch of different sports here and there here in New York. Um, and um, after that, one of the schools was just like, hey, we really love the way you work with these kids. Would you like a full-time position? And once I saw that potential of growing, I was like, oh, I'm going to go down this way. We're going to test these waters. So I started out at a high school um, in Queens, in which I taught health and PE my first year. And then my second year, they wanted me more in the classroom because of I had, had a good classroom management. So they felt like the kids would benefit from me more in the classroom, um, so in which I did psychology and health that year. After then, I really felt like I was still stagnant and I didn't grow much. And I found another school in Brooklyn that was middle school, but they were with, like, I saw my growth. I saw the trainings. I saw the, the investment they had in me. So I was willing to invest my time in them. And I've been teaching PE here for, this is my third year now, teaching PE. And I love every minute of it. The kids have so much personalities where it's like, wow, I thought teaching was going to be hard because of all those personalities. But I see myself in my kids in which I'm like, I can do so much with this. Even if I still want to do the sports psychology route at some point in time, I can still use this experience to help with that, you know, and or even just like my clientele, if I get to that goal, because I like I said, I'm growing here fast. I'm one of the leaders of my special team and I really enjoy um, working with my team and having fun with them and work doesn't always feel like work. It just is like, I'm showing up, I'm with my fam and we're having a good time teaching these kids. Some days I won't lie, are very hard, but I'm <laughs> Yeah, I get it, I get it. So um, in talking to a lot of different teachers on this, um, I always hear that they usually get into teaching by accident or like by mistake, right? It seems like you were kind of tapped to do it, right? Yep. I was, this was definitely by accident. And I was just like, oh, I'm here. And I like this, though. So I can stay here. But yeah, I was definitely just like tapped into it. And I'm like, every other schools that I would coach at would literally be like, ask me the same thing. Like, we like the way you work with kids. Would you like a job here? So for all these people to see it, I'm just like, hmm, God must be telling me something. <laughs> like, there it is. Let me go with it. So as much as it was an accident, it was still like a blessing in a way because I was able to discover so much new things about myself that I didn't realize because I was just really trying to push away from it. But it just kept embracing me in every way possible. Wow, that's great. <laughs> Another thing you were just talking about was um, your new school gave you like different chances to move up, right? So with me teaching physics, right? I think the natural progression of leadership is you start as what a student teacher, then a teacher, then maybe a department chair, then maybe a principal and things like that. What's the gym teacher leadership route? 
So for a gym teacher from, cause I am also still learning because this yeah. was um, what I did at least in college, I studied psychology. So there's also still a lot of things that I'm learning within the educational realm. Um, but as a gym teacher, it seems like the next step would be like, I would lead a specials team. So they call the gym teacher, the Matt, I mean, the gym teacher, the theater teacher, the art teacher, and the dance teacher. We were called the specials team. So to be the leader of it, meaning like I coach the other teachers on how to conduct their classes, but also not to step on their shoes too much because at the end of the day, we're still masters of our own content. So just being able to guide and aid them when difficult situations do arise or to find some type of consistency in all of our things. So being the leader of the specials team in that sense at my school, then the next step would be being a a department special teacher for the network, meaning that I connect with all of the special teachers within the network for middle school because the network I'm in is a K through 12. Then after that- when, wait, network, when, you, when you say network, you mean the charter network? The charter network, gotcha, yes. Okay. The charter network that I work for would the next step after just being a leader at my school would be the network charter leader. And then, well, the charter leader of middle school specifically, then after that, the entire network. Um, mm, okay, okay. Meaning yeah. that like, I can create curriculum, um, check in with all of the school, the principals at the schools that know how the leaders at their specials, of their special teams are going, like doing all those things. And then after that, I guess like if I ever wanted to run my own athletic department, because a lot of charter schools don't have their own athletic department, they're very small. So it would be either be if, an opportunity opens up where I can run an athletic department or just moving on, unfortunately, to another network or to another school that has those opportunities for me to continue to grow. Yeah, I want to get on that too. So having the, you said most charter schools don't have the um, athletic department, right? Um, yeah. That was true at my charter schools I taught at. That was true at my independent school I taught at and the mm -hmm. uh, small public school I taught at. It was a super, super small athletic program. How is that? Because I guess I want to preface that by saying a lot of schools are becoming more focused on different areas. For example, I was at a STEM school where teaching physics at a STEM school, you're like top dog, right? <laughs> but I also taught at a classical academy, right? But I also taught at a classical academy where physics at a school that's focusing on like the great books and literature, they did not care too much about what I was doing, you know? Right. So as a gym teacher, where do you think you fall in that? Do you think your school has that type of value or? Honestly, I feel like my school, it's hit or miss. It's it's literally like dependent on the day where they value specials. Because think about it, like even just as like when I was a kid, gym was that fun class where it was that easy A, that easy pass or fail class. Like it's like in order to fail gym, what do you do? Just not play. Like <laughs> So it's like, other teachers, of course, do view it in that sense, especially when benchmark testing comes around or state testing comes around. It definitely becomes like, oh, you guys don't matter. <laughs> like, we're going to put you in a classroom and we're going to utilize your space, whether you like it or not. And it's like, I'm doing these lesson plans and I'm prepping all these things and I'm putting a lot more effort than you may think into these things just for it not to be valued or not to be looked at to get the feedback that's needed. And when I do get that feedback and I'm trying to demonstrate it in my classes, there's no one there to observe it, to let me know like, oh, that does work or, oh, that doesn't work, like things like that. So it's it's literally hit or miss because it's like, if my my coach wants to be like, oh, okay, well, let's check in on specials because I haven't checked in today. Then it becomes super important. <laughs> but it's if- the, like well, an afterthought. Exactly. And right now being that, you know, last year was a pandemic and a lot of us were remote, especially we were remote the entire year. Um, we have a big learning gap. So they're trying to catch these kids up, use any extra time that we have, including after school time to close that learning gap to tutor these kids in, the, in their core contents, like their math or science or ELAs, stuff like that. So, and even like the kids that do need an extra love or, you know, that are, do have IEPs and stuff like that, making sure that they have the guidance that they need to do, to excel in their classes. And 
PE, dance, art, theater, it doesn't, it doesn't play into that. And it does hurt because it's like, this is also their social emotional learning. And it's very, very important because you start to see like the back end of it. Like a lot of these kids aren't processing their emotions or a lot of these kids need breaks during the day. Or um, a lot of these kids don't know how to accept a loss if they lost a game or, you know, or if they didn't get an A on a paper, they don't know how to accept that loss or even to work as a group like, you learn things like that in our content and it's, it sucks that schools don't fully value it or even like here, what I'm experiencing, they don't value it as often as they should, or they don't put that same standard in other classes with our classes, because it's like, as a teacher, we have standards and things that, and responsibilities we have to meet. And if we don't meet them, our job is on the line. So it's like, we're putting all this effort in just for, you know, everyone else to turn around and be like, well, we're not going to care about gym today. On top of that, Coach T, we're going to use your space. So unfortunately, your classes are in a classroom, but keep the volume down. So it's like, <laughs> make it make sense, you know? But yeah, yeah like that's like, it, it's hit or miss depending on what they're trying to figure out or what the bigger problem is for that day or for that, I guess, marking period of like the two weeks participation grade period, stuff like that. Yeah, and man, um, it's uh, what just happened in, um, I think that was New York recently with uh, the grocery store, right? I'm thinking like a class like gym, you may not immediately think, but that could be super important for things like that and just getting people to work together in different environments, yep. right? Not just on this history project, but like, nah, we can both work right. to like explore this point or goal or something, you know? Right, right. And it's and it's really disheartening because it's like, for example, and it's crazy that I can use this example today, but um, today one of my students came down off of a layup. We were, they had free play today. Um, so they came down off of a layup and twisted their ankle really bad. Like they broke, they're, I'm pretty sure that they broke their foot ankle, that whole area. Um, to make a long story short, as I'm waiting, as I'm trying to get the kids over to the side, because I had like 40 kids by myself, other kids that know what to do, because I know those kids work on teams outside of school, they're trying to help me get them over to the side. Whereas other kids, I'm like, stop playing basketball. I'm on the phone with 911 and I cannot hear them. They're like, why? Why do I have to do this? They don't I want to play. Right. Yeah, and I'm like, are you serious right now? <laughs> like, yeah. The kid is okay, though, to end the story. And <laughs> he's in the in the ambulance, if not already at the hospital. But yeah, like, it's just like, if they had more PE time, they would be able to understand how to process these things or to understand, like, pause when this is happening, move to the side because we need you to be still. And we need to get this kid out of here to make sure he's okay. And if you're his friend, you would understand that and just move just based off of that. But a lot of those conversations you can't have during math, you can't have during science. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's just like, you need this because test is coming up or state test is coming up. And if you want to go to the next grade, this is what you need to do. <laughs> like, yeah, like this is more of a life skill that you need yes, to learn. Yes, yes. And, wow. and it's so important to me because it's like, that's how I learned my life skills. Like sports is so important or, you know, any, any other extracurricular activity I did, even drawing or learning how to play the piano like these are things that I learned how to cope with all these other factors of my life when they happen so it's it's interesting like it's interesting that schools right now and I get it because of the learning gap but it's like these things should be valued too because these kids have been by themselves or only with their parents during the pandemic the whole time so it's so it's disheartening yeah I get it I get it and that's needs to be a bigger conversation with like the school system and all that, but mm -hmm. maybe talking about your students specifically, right? How do you get them to take it seriously? And early, I was just trying to think of ways that like classroom teachers differ from like gym teachers, but like, how do you get your students to take it seriously? Right. So I let them know the way I, the way it starts off is like, this is what I value. I'm very transparent with my kids. So I let them know, even like if I'm out sick, I'm like, y'all, I was sick. <laughs> like, I'm very, very transparent with everything that I do with them. So when it comes time to teaching this class, I let them know, like, 
this is something very, very important to me. And I understand it may not be important to all of you, but it's important to me. And if you value me, I value you just the same. And we're going to get through this. And even if you don't value me, I need you to value it because you like to come here. This is a space, even outside of just playing the games we play here, you guys enjoy being in the space. This is where a lot of the joy in my building happens. Like when we have um, school rallies, like prep rallies for like their different exams, when we have people come to talk to them, when we have um, parent fun nights, when we have um, parent teacher conferences, when we have all these things, this, my gym is the joy space. So it's like, you don't want this space to be a negative space for you, especially if you know you spend a majority of the day in your classroom. And mm -hmm. I wanna make this easier for you. And in order to do that, we can work together. I work together with my kids all the time. Like I, from the beginning of the year, we create the social contract together. We create code words to communicate because in middle school, a lot of them still have a hard time knowing how to use their words when they are upset or when they just don't know what they're feeling. They're able to just kind of be like, hey, Coach T, peace. And I know like they're taking their five minutes. So being that they have that autonomy in my classroom, like it definitely, I see that it keeps them motivated to want to come back at least. And then as far as games to keep them motivated to play it, I'm like, you never know when you're going to come across this game again. Or like a lot of you play this game in camp and you love, you talk to me about how you love going to camp in the summertime. And this is where I pull the games from. Or like they love giving me suggestions and doing votes. They love me picking up the, the cardboard papers and throwing them out like, okay, count this vote. This is basketball. This is soccer. What sport are we doing today? Like <laughs> they, being that they're so involved in the learning process of it all, it definitely, and half the time they don't even realize it. Like, I'm like, yeah, I don't realize I want either choice, but for them, it's like, no, we're choosing what we want and you're going to give it to us. But in my mind, I'm like, I like either sport either way. So we're going to play it or not. Like, yeah. but those yeah. things definitely keep it, keep it fun for me too. Like, right. No, really. Cause like, that sounds like the fun class, right? Like the place to be. Yeah. But if I'm remembering my middle school experience, right? Elementary school PE is fun. We get to run around, right? But middle school is when you get cool, you know, like I don't want to get too sweaty. I got this, this after, you know, like, is it always fun for the students? Yes and no. Yeah. Um, these kids will always be sweating. They had a debate in one of their classes. The seventh graders had a debate in one of their classes during this week. So they were able to dress down and dress professional or dress appropriate for whatever topic they were debating. And I was like, okay, I'm going to give you free play only because I understand that you don't want to mess up your clothes. These kids was in here sweating. They're like, coach, she cannot take my button up off. They're going to find a way to play because they've been. Oh, wait, wait, wait. They, they don't change in middle school? No. So they're allowed, they have a gym. They do have a gym uniform. They're allowed to wear it on the, the day that they have gym, which is for me every day. For the kids that have me, at least, because as I said earlier, they um, got, were able to choose what elective they got, what went into at the beginning of the year. So um, if they, if they don't have anything going on Monday through Thursday, they wear their gym uniform. And then Friday, unless it's dressed down, they put on their regular school uniform. Um, but they wear oh, their wait, wait. all day or they change for gym class all day. all day. That's really interesting. Wow. Okay. We don't have, we don't have like locker rooms Lock or anything like that. And our transition times and our daily schedule, there's literally like not enough time for them mm -hmm. to change. Cause also in middle school, they want to, they want to do this a lot. Like they yeah. want to talk, they want to be in the bathroom. They want to do all these things. And I have fifth grade all the way through eighth grade. I teach all of them. So it's like the, the eighth grade girls, they all they want to do is converse and stay in a bathroom all day if they even had an opportunity to change <laughs> so our school set it up where it's just like wear your gym uniform when you have something that's in motion and on test days like when they don't have gym or we're in the classroom they wear their regular school uniform with the t-shirt and the um the dress pants and or skirt stuff like that gotcha like, gotcha mm -hmm. but yeah um back to the um being too cool and sweating oh, right. every day. So yeah, they um because I was like, oh, I forgot the question. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dressing out. But um, yeah, like they they I don't feel like my students are ever too cool to play. If anything, the when they're not motivated to play, it comes from because they don't want that sport. Mm. So like 
if it's a soccer day, they're like, you have the the players, the the guys that like to play basketball, they're like, Coach, I don't want to do this. Like, and then they'll give you a hard time. Like, that's the only time like where they feel like they're too cool to play another sport because they're a master of the, the other sport. Mm. So one day it was funny. I introduced them to volleyball. It's crazy how a lot of these kids don't know a lot of like the what would be considered a popular sports like volleyball, kickball, soccer, basketball, stuff like that. So they didn't know how a lot of them did not know how to play back on um, volleyball. So when I introduced it to them, they were like, Goshi, I don't like this. Like, we don't want to do this. Like a lot of them are just like, we'd rather play basketball and soccer all day. And I'm like, no, the world isn't basketball and soccer. Like you <laughs> have to see other sports as well. Hey, so, I did. So you're in New York. Yeah. In your city. Do you think that's a cultural thing? Kickball, yes. Volleyball. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's definitely cultural because the kids that I had in high school were familiar with all this stuff and they were in Queens. The kids here in Canarsie, this area is majority like West Indian, Caribbean people, like mm. stuff like that. A lot of their families are immigrants. So they weren't born here. They're probably born in like um, Grenada, Haiti, Barbados, like Trinidad, all these other places. Some of the, the kids were even born there or like their parents still live there and they're being raised by like their grandparents or aunts and uncles up here. And a lot of the sports that they know are soccer, basketball, cricket, like <laughs> They don't know a lot of other sports. Yeah. And if they do know it, it's just because they saw it on TV, but never actually tried it out. So yeah. I was able to order even like hockey stuff. And they were like, hockey, but we don't have ice. And I'm like, there's other ways to play hockey. There's <laughs> ways. Like, and I show them all these pictures of like filled hockey sticks. And they're like, oh, she that's a candy cane. How would you hit this? How would you hit oh, the puck? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, like, all these different things like a lot of them never heard of field day for example like so we're having field day this year for the first time in a very long time um so they're excited for these things so it's like the, the motivation only drops when they don't want to do something however when i when i said at the beginning they created a social contract and a lot all of them put and i even even if they didn't put it i mentioned it to them you're gonna try it first before you just automatically give up when you walk into this gym. So usually they try it and they end up liking it. <laughs> like, like if they don't like it, I find other ways. Like even if I have to go on YouTube and find another video of how can I teach the sport to make it fun or what's a game I could play that introduces the sport, you know? So um, they'll, if motivation happens, like unmotivation happens, it happens because they just don't want the sport because they're not familiar with it but i haven't encountered anything else other than that okay okay well good to hear still having positive experiences <laughs> yeah. um yeah. so so yeah i think those last couple questions were more about like the challenges of being a gym teacher compared to classroom teacher um mm -hmm. what do you think are some of the perks that you get for being a gym teacher <laughs> Compared so to all a lot of a majority of the kids just love me. <laughs> stop. Even when I'm like, I need a break. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> the thing is, like, honestly, though, they just love me because I have something they want. So they just they're very responsive and respect receptive to anything that I ask them to do. Or like I can reason with them a lot easier than the other teachers can because. I teach a content that a lot of that's popular. Whereas the other teachers, like even when I used to be a psych teacher, these kids was not in my face. They're like, oh, that's the teacher that gave us all the readings. It's like, oh. Coach, see you later. <laughs> but with PE, it's they they just, I think it's also like I said, like I'm very transparent with them. So I'm able to be like, I understand what you're going through. I can tell you this story because as much as I am also still very young. I've been through a lot of experiences that has gotten me where I am. So I can relate to you on so many ways. Like, just like how your family is Caribbean, my family is also Caribbean. Just like how you grew up in Brooklyn, I grew up in Brooklyn. Like, you, I may not have gone to the same schools, but my home was still always where you guys are, you know? Like, and with them, they're able to see it and they see it in just, even just what I wear to school, like the different types of sneakers, like, we have a lot of the same interests. So they're like, okay, I can level up and we coach the both of us could be out here with Jordan's on. Like, and <laughs> being able to relate to them, that's what keeps us like on the same grounds very much. So like with being a teacher here and them loving me and I love them back, conflict does arise when that transparency, it 
it can also be like a curse because it's like you share all of this with them and they feel very comfortable after a while. So when they are upset, they feel comfortable saying things where you like, let's not forget, I'm still the teacher and you're still the student, you know? So it's, it's one of those things as well. Like it's, sorry, it's, um, it's, how do I explain it? Um, like I said, a blessing and a curse. Like the kids love me, but at the same time, like when they love me too much, that comfortability sets in and they like can lose their respect. And it's like, you gotta let them know you're a teacher. I'm the teacher, you're the student, watch what you say. And when you say so that to them, that's when it's like, oh shit, reality check. Like, yep. I'm Coach T, but I'm not why I didn't even say that. Like, no, you're good. Don't make Coach T have to put the J's on because <laughs> you'll see. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Tyler, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate your insight no. on uh, coaching your gym classes, how it compares to classroom teachers. Um, no yeah, it's part of the reason why I think I might have to change this to the coolest teacher of all time. <laughs> you fit the criteria. <laughs> Thanks, Sha. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, thank you to everyone else for watching The Greatest Teacher of All Time, where I, Quincy Dawson, interview teachers of color, highlight their philosophies, strategies, and personalities.